Well, furnished. Still be embers. Wasn't sure I wanted to show this. But it's gotten kind of jerked up. So I'm uh, thinking I probably just can't keep it. Got to share it. No, here's a store. You know you want it here. out walking. Try to do that every now and then. Keeps the mind clear. Stays healthy. I've got a black lab that likes to go along with me, you know. We have fun. And as I was walking around in our community, I came up to, you know, we go through the park like we usually do. And over by the playground, I was found. No, I don't see nothing else. Just a bag. Find a playground, so what? But the dog, Deuce, keeps hitting on me. He is interested in this bag. And I gotta be honest, my first thought was I better get to that bag before he pees on it. He marks his territory like you would not believe. So, I ran over. I was walking over to get that bag from him. He said, Nah, dude. Stay away from that bag, boy. And I was curious. What's in the bag? Why was it left here? I guess in today's culture, I probably should have, you know, walked away, called moms, tech, security, police, I don't know, firefighters, postman, I don't know, somebody. But there's this bag. Curiosity got me. So I get Deuce away from the bag and I'm kneeling down on and I'm going to go look in. And about the time I go to look in, I hear this, hey, what are you doing? And I look back and there's this guy. He don't look like he's up to any good. He's a pretty big guy. He's got a trim beard, so not right away a boy. He trims his beard. And then, he's pretty big, short, hair. He looked like he was upset. And he was uh, starting to storm up to me. So I got the chicken wing. So I grabbed the bag and left. <laughs> Let's be honest, I am not a runner. That's why I walk with the dog. <laughs> but I grabbed that bag and I ran. Mm-mm. I don't know why. Instinct. I just took it and ran. Dog, you know, the dog's running with me. He's leading, he's pulling, and I think that's the only reason I was as fast as I was because the dog was pulling. No boy gives me chase. I hate gonna catch me, but I'm getting scared. So I go a little bit faster. A little bit more. I'm thinking, can't keep up. I gotta stop, you know? And John's on me. Gotta get it, go. Be the hammer, not the nail. So I do. I pour it on, which ain't much, but oh boy, ain't putting out any either. So we go around, go around the block, cut through a couple of areas that I'm familiar with. The dog goes with me. He's leading the way, really knows the path really well. And oh boy, yelling. We want his bag. But I don't know that it's his. Finders keep it around. So he, he about giving chase and I could swear some point along the way I hear these tires screeching to the stop. I hear doors slamming. I hear, get him, he's got the bag. I think, oh crap, 
What did I do now? I'm still laughing. I'm still hushing. I'm hushing. I'm going to make it home. But I stop and I think, do I want to go home? I don't want those guys following me to my house. I mean, I don't want them to know where I'm at. But then I walk the same path all the time. I come from the house, go home. Maybe I should just drop the bag. I should freaking drop the bag and go away. It's running through my head. I'm thinking this. But, you know, it ain't working. You know, I've been accused a lot of times of having diarrhea of the mouth and constipation of the brain. But in this particular case, my brain was all backed up. And my body was doing something completely different. And I think it was running completely on instinct and probably a whole lot of fear. I did not want to get caught, but I was not about to drop this stupid bag. I tried to have it. I don't know why, but I did. So we make our way around. I hear the door, the doors close back up again, and it's fired the engine guns, and it's taken off down the street. And I know where the street goes. And it's got to make an abrupt right turn. There's just no way you can go. And I didn't hear the, the car turn around, so I know where he's headed, and I just had to pop off in a different direction. So I did. And I hunkered down into some bushes, which wasn't smart because they had these thorns in them, and that hurt like crap. But the dog and I were hunkered down. And I saw an old boy in the distance, and he was trucking, but he was going in a completely off direction. I, not even sure what he's looking for. Don't know if he's going to a car. Don't know if he lives in the area. He's going home. Um, but I had this thought that put me all in the up and up because it's not like he said, I'm going to call police. You know, he didn't break out no phone. He just was yelling at me to stop in this other car. I don't know who they are, but they're looking for me too. So I hope we're down here. And then when I think it's all good, I don't hear the car anymore, I don't see old boy, I pop up out of them bushes and head on home. Looking over my shoulder the whole time because I'm a little bit worried they might come out and be looking for me. So I finally got home, got this bag, got to open up and look inside. All right. So, that's from earlier today, another video. Still smoking on this um, Dagwood Cobb. It's got a good sized bowl. Keeps me entertained. Um, you can puff on this for some time. You'll be okay. This is still that second breakfast, and uh, I'm enjoying it. I don't, I don't get any stun bite out of it. And, and it. Um, it is pretty good and nice, but I think I'm getting close to, if you ever had the Missouri Meershams, you know they have that stem. And it goes in and it leaves a little of that birch wood, I think it is, and it sits at the bottom uh, of the bowl. And until it starts charring, it gives a taste, like, you know, burning wood. And uh, sometimes the problem is, is when, you, when it hasn't charred enough yet, and, and I'm still just starting out with this bite, uh, it gives an off flavor to the tobacco. So... When I, when I smoke a new tobacco in this one, I, I don't judge right away. I just kind of wait and, you know, until I have a, I should have used a more established fire duct. So, so, just wanted to get that out. Hope you all have a good day. Um, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Oh, what? You only know what's in the bag, don't you? The bag is full of crap, just like the rest of my story. <laughs> <laughs> so, the big guy I'm describing isn't menacing. It's my old buddy, Bulldog Piper. And Bulldog is relocating back home to Ohio. Um, and he didn't want to take all his tobacco with him. So he made me an incredible deal. <laughs> Loaded this thing up with all kinds of jars of aromatics. I don't know what he's thinking. Aromatics are great. 
fly picked out quite a bit. I don't think I can actually show it all to you in a reasonable time, but let's look at a little bit. Uh, this jar is some GLP Robusto. Uh, let's see, I've got um, some Pretty Thanksgiving 2016. Corn cop pipe and a button nose from 2016. Uh, what's this one? Grand Crew from Ch Chapone, Chapone, I don't know. This one's sealed up. Uh, some McClellan mixture number eight, some Peterson University flake, uh, Burley flake from Cornell and Deal, brown sugar. What's left of that? I think he enjoyed that one too much. Um, Three Oaks English blend. There's some Peter Stokeby in here. Um, he even gave me some, uh, got some Margate from Esoterica, and there's Dunbar in here as well. Ramsgate from Esoterica. Pretty nice. I like that. So he made me an incredible deal. Thank you so much, Bulldog. You're a great guy. He's a good friend. Uh, I'm really sorry to see him uh, head back to Ohio from Chandler here because we didn't have an opportunity to hang out as much as we liked with the uh, both of us taking care of our, our kids and on summertime the kids were on break but uh, oh look at that see esoterica dunbar but here's the deal you ever heard oh i got some mosquito have you ever heard the phrase of the turd punch bowl you heard that one before? No matter how good that punch is, you slip a turd in it, everybody remembers the turd. I'm about to show you the turd in my punch bowl. Some bacon old fashioned. He put bacon old fashioned in here. That's just, why would you do that, Bulldog? Why would you do that to me? That's cruel, man. You, you just put a turd in my punch bowl. And if you guys haven't seen his video and his reaction, I'll tell you, there's two guys I know have videos on it. One is Matches860. Is it Matches8? Matches? Let's go Matches. He don't like it, but he forces himself every year in July to smoke this stuff. I, I don't know why. Um, it's masochistic. And then Bulldog did the same thing. And did you see his reaction when he puffed on this? He described this as burning tire. Some kind of plastic. So, yeah, he told me all about the uh, esoterica that he put in there, that Dunbar and, you know, Dunbar in there and Margate and I don't know what else. But then he slips this turd in my punch bowl. <laughs> you, you dirty dog. All right, I'll put down below his, uh, his video so you can go see. You don't have to watch very long. You'll see it. It's reaction. It's funny as all get out. And, uh, that's it. He threw in a, uh, I bought also from a really nice humidor, uh, 100 count, pretty nice. He threw in a cob. Um, so it's a nice cob one there. I think it's that uh, amber bit Danish, I don't know. It's a, a naked cob or unfinished because you can see it's got all the kernels readily available. And if you look at my Dagner style, it's kind of mudded in with the, uh, um, I'm not sure what they use, I forget, Paris of Plaster or something, or Plaster of Paris, whatever. Alright guys, last video, I just want to thank the Super Bulldog, he's a great guy, you better start producing more videos, and just a, a quick story to have some fun with y'all today. Enjoy your day, thanks for coming around, catch you later.